Hi everybody, how's everybody doing? This is Cherie McGinnis and I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, I just thought that I would go over my scripture writings that I did in the month of May. Because it's June now and I we're starting a new month. And uh, I did my scripture writings in May in this book. Uh, it comes out of a, a subscription that I have. It's called Love and Faith. And they send you notebooks and different things in your box each month. And I thought I would make use of this one for my scripture writing in the month of May. So if you're new here, welcome. And I hope that you enjoy this video. And you can go check some of my other videos out if you want. And um, we did New Life in Christ was our scripture writing plan for the month of May. And uh, these books have... Um, like a little devotional each day, and then I did my scripture writings for each day. And there's the one for the first. There's the one for this, uh, the third. Where did I miss the second at? Oh, you know what? I think, oh, here it is. I'm sorry. There's two on this day. The first and the second was on one day. And all I did on this, these come just plain white uh, in the background. Uh, but I took my um, distressing inks and distressed the page a little bit and then did my scripture writings and stickers and stuff on top of that. So it doesn't come with all this stuff on and it's plain white paper with lines on it. Um, but anyway, that's how I did that one. And that's how I did that one. And you don't have to write your scriptures out if you do a scripture writing plan. You can just read them or whatever you want to do. But I enjoy writing sometimes, and uh, I always have. And anyway, this is just how I did mine for the month of May. And I made a little mistake there. I had to cover it up and keep going, and that's just fine. Because you know what? We are not perfect real life and it's okay that's right that's what i wrote on there and that's the truth but here's how i did my i uh i'm doing june's in a happy planner notebook i think uh well no that's what i've been doing anyway but i like to mix it up every now and then and uh not today satan <laughs> But I like to mix it up, make it interesting, because you can get in a little slump of doing things. And if you miss a day or something, it don't matter. You just keep right on going whenever you feel like you're up to it. I know not every day everybody feels like writing and doesn't have, you know, doesn't feel good every day. And uh, you just do what you can. Now, this month had some hefty verses in it. It had a lot of verses Um one I'm doing for uh, June does not have as many verses because it does get a little cumbersome writing so many verses sometimes. Uh, sometimes I have to do it in sections. Like if I get tired or something, I'll do some in the morning, some in the afternoon or whatever. Um, most of the time I get them all posted in the mornings though. I try to post them every day. But I enjoy decorating the pages. It's kind of like a, it helps with my anxiety and stuff sometimes. But uh, that was most of mine for the month of May. Um, I'm not sure if I... Not sure what I did for the others. Oh, here we go. There's those. I tried them out in uh, in this notebook for the end of the month. Uh, the reason I had to do that, I remember now, is because I messed up the month before and I didn't have enough pages left to finish my month out. So I did some in different notebooks just to to get it done and to, to give another try. But um. You know, that's just the way I am in uh, the month of June. Here's my first and second for the month of June. 
But uh, that's how I'm doing that. These are some devotionals, if you want to see them here. This is the one from David Jeremiah, uh, David Jeremiah, excuse me, Turning Points. And it's one that I get every month. Um, this one is June's. This is my In Touch, which is Charles Stanley. Get that one every month. And uh, this one is um, one that I've just started getting. It's a sermon companion for Charles Stanley sermons on TV. I was printing those off every Sunday, and uh, or just about every Sunday. And that was getting kind of hard and expensive to do, but I did it anyway. But he also, you can call for the notes, and this is a study companion that goes along with his sermons that he does. <clears throat> I'm creepy today. I haven't talked much today. I don't know if that's what it is, or I just now start talking, and I just heard myself. When I started this video, I haven't said very much today yet. I sound like I'm kind of creepy, but I was outside a lot yesterday. But anyway, this is called the Sermon Companion, and I guess you can get this. Um, I went on InTouch.org, and that's how I got... Uh, got that one. It took me about six weeks to get it in the mail, I guess. Uh, I wasn't sure. I thought I was getting it in an email, but I got it in a mail. And I don't know. I do donate to him sometimes, and I don't know if that had something to do with it or what, because I thought it said they'd send me an email, but I was very thankful to get that in the mail, so I'm glad about that. But that's about it. That's my Hello Kitty ink pen pouch that I've got. I've had for a long, long, long time. A girl named Veronica on here had one years ago, and I searched high and low for that thing. I paid too much for it, really, but I wanted it so bad, and I've used it for years, so I'm getting my use out of it. But um, anyway, that's what I'm doing. I've just been trying out different ways of doing scripture writings and stuff, and different books to do it in. If you like ink pens, I got these off of Amazon, and, and you see they've got a little silver ball there. That kind of helps you identify them. But I got these off of Amazon. A girl in the, the doctor's office was writing down stuff uh, in the room one day, and I loved her ink pen. And I said, you know, most people notice people's jewelry or their outfits or their hair and stuff. But I, I zone in on ink pens, and I'm like, hey, where'd you get that ink pen? Because it looks like it's writing so smooth. And she said, I love these things. I got them on uh, Amazon. And they're kind of ombre looking where they go from one color to another. And that little silver dot helps you identify them. But they are just the neatest pens. They don't really have a name. I don't know what to tell you to look for, but I just put on, what did I put on there? Ombre ink pens or O-M-B-R-E, ombre or something, ink pens. But anyway, um, they're like a gel, I guess, a medium point. But uh, I really like them. Let's see, I think that's what I wrote this with, if I'm not mistaken. But they write so smooth. They write really smooth. So I think that you uh, I think you would like them. They come like all in different colors. I don't know where they're all at right now, or I'd show them all to you. But they come like a pink to a blue, and all the different colors change down through them on different ones. But anyway, those are on Amazon if you like really nice ink pens, and I do. <laughs> I always notice ink pens and stuff when I'm out and around people. So, anyway, that's what I got going on today. I um, had a nice cookout yesterday with some friends. They come over. And I took uh, Bella and Giz outside. I wished I had videoed it. I didn't even think about it because I was just trying to keep up with Bella. I wanted to make sure because I was afraid. I, she's never been really outside on the grass much or anything. We had a terrible incident with her when she was just a puppy, and uh, I probably told y'all about it on here, but if you're new, you might not know, but anyway, when she was very small, I mean, we hadn't had her very long. She was probably a couple months old or something, very little. Um, anyway, we've got a cat, Miss Kitty. Well, we took Bella outside in the yard and Giz, and Miss Kitty was out there, and they were playing in the grass. Well, all of a sudden, Bella, uh, she's a little uh, Shih Tzu, uh, a Pekingese Shih Tzu mix, she um, started acting funny. It's like she was almost paralyzed, and she couldn't, like, move. Her, she, her body was bended, like, almost like in an S. Scared us to death. We rushed her to the vet, and on the way there, 
I mean, we just knew she was dying. I mean, you could, it was very bad. It was very scary. She threw up, and it was like a white, milky liquid, watery, milky liquid. She threw up on me and the floorboard. I mean, she just threw up. And I thank God that she did because I think it's what saved her life. When we got her to the vet, she had straightened up some. Everything looked good. They did all kinds of tests on her, blood work and things. And he said all he could tell was that she had gotten into something outside or something and, you know, had a seizure or something to do with that. So anyway, um, we brought her home and we're thinking, what did she get into? It was something in the grass. I mean, it made us paranoid, you know. So she's gotten a bug. She's picked up something. But then I got to thinking... And she was playing with Miss Kitty, and that's about all she really did. She just went out, played with Miss Kitty, had the episode. And I got to thinking, I had put flea treatment on the back of Miss Kitty's shoulder blades. You know how you do cats in between their shoulder blades on their back so they can't lick it? I had done that earlier, either, I think that day, if I'm not mistaken, I had done that. Didn't think a thing about it. I mean, we've done it, you know, on our cats forever. I never had an issue with anything. But I got to thinking, Miss Kitty was out there playing with, and Bella was a licker. She licked and licked, and plus she was wrestling with Miss Kitty. She had got that flea treatment, which is very, very poisonous to dogs, on her or licked it or something. And then that's when she had that poisonous episode. And uh, the veterinarian was like, yeah, I'd say that's what it was, you know, because we just weren't thinking about that. But that's what it was. But anyway, I guess we were kind of paranoid about that whole thing. But they don't go outside much. I mean, they go on the front porch, her and Gizmo, or on the back porch. But they're never really down in the yard or anything. We keep them up close to the house on the porches where they can't get out. Well, yesterday we had friends over, and Oscar said, why don't you put them outside with us? They would enjoy that so much. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm so protective. I'm like... I'm like, okay. I said, I've got their harnesses, which have our name and phone number in case Bella escapes, you know. And I have a vibrating collar, not a shock collar. I do not like shock collars. I think they are cruel. Do not like them. This is a vibrating collar that has different levels, and, a, and it beeps. And all I use, really, is the beep. And it's just like a beep. It's just like a tone. It's not nothing loud and obnoxious. It's just a soft tone. And you have levels one through, I don't know, six or eight or something uh but anyway you uh can set that but anyway i put the collar on her i thought well i'm gonna put her harness on her and i'm gonna put this collar on her and if she starts to run away or something i can hit the the tone button and she'll come back to me and she does she it's it's a soft tone but she don't know where it's coming from and it, it you know it makes her come back to me and uh and then the other part is a vibrating. It's just like if your phone vibrated in your pocket. You know, it's not a shock at all. It's just a vibrating sensation. And uh, I never, hardly ever even have to use that on her. If she starts doing something and not paying attention, I will. And it's down on like one. So, I mean, it doesn't take much for her. But anyway, I took her outside, put her collar on her, put her harness on her, put Gizmo's harness on him just to make sure they were doing okay. Um, and took my, uh, my remote with me. It's on a remote control, so you make it, you know, you just boop, you know, you just barely do it, and it's like beep, you know, and that's all it takes for her. But anyway, they had a blast. I am going to do that more often now. She was very good. She stayed close to the house. I wouldn't do it without the collar, just in case she got a wild hair, you know, and decided, oh, I'm brave now, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to keep the collar on her. I don't have to turn it on to use it or whatever, but I know it's there if I need it. But we eventually took the harnesses off of them, and they stayed right there close to the house. We did, um, there's Miss Kitty. <laughs> Miss Kitty's coming up the driveway. Let me see if I can show you Miss Kitty. Can you see her? I don't know if you can see her. Where is she? There she is. There she comes. She came across the driveway and that sets the driveway alarm off. <laughs> There's Miss Kitty. Yeah. See my pretty flowers hanging on the front porch? <laughs> but anyway, um, they had a blast out there yesterday. They really did. And so we're going to do that more often. But uh, she got on the grass and she was like, 
you know, kind of high stepping a little bit because she couldn't remember ever being on it before. And uh, she loved it, but she stayed close to me. She didn't get far away from me because she's a mommy's girl anyway. If I come in the house, she came in the house. She stayed right with me. But uh, she didn't venture far from me. And she'd get out in the grass and she smelled of the grass. And there was something out there in one spot she just loved. She smelled and smelled and smelled. But um, anyway, uh, they had a good time. I put their potty pen out in the garage. We had the garage door up. Everybody was sitting out there in lawn chairs. And we went to the back carport, but the dogs didn't go back there. And we had our cookout back there. We've got an area back there with a fire pit and a grill and things. And uh, I didn't let them go back there, but they did stay out front with us for a while. And then they, you know, they got a little bit hot, and I put them in the house. But we had a fan on, and it was a beautiful day yesterday with a breeze. It was only in the maybe upper 70s or something. Beautiful day for a cookout. So, anyway, we had a really good day yesterday. Even the doggies and the peppers, whatever you want to call them, our babies, they had a good day, too. And we had spent it with my dad, and his dog was, he brought his dog, too. And he's a blue healer. And they all get along real good. And Miss Kitty, I mean, every, all of us had a good time. Nobody was left out. But we all really enjoyed it. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining me. And um, if I get into anything else, I will let you know. But right now, that's all I've got planned. We're working on the boat. Oscar got, I told you all about in the last video or two, bought this pontoon boat. that's all aluminum frame and everything, floor. Nothing will rot on it. But it's a fixer-upper. So he's out there actually working on it right now. Dad's going to come help him too sometimes. I think next week he's he's ordered a bunch of stuff for it. Next week's the day they're really going to hit it hard, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's that's a project that we're working on right now. He's working on it more than me. I was on my feet and walked around a lot yesterday, and I'm not getting around too good today. But I, maybe I will after a while. Maybe I'll get to going, but right now I'm in slow motion. <laughs> But thank you for joining me. I'm so glad to, that you're here. And I'm so glad I got on here to say hi. And uh, I hope to be back on here real soon. Um, I never have a schedule or anything because I never know what I'm doing as far as getting on here. But everybody's nice and bears with me. And they see me when they see me. And if I'm gone too long, they'll check on me, make sure I'm okay. I'm feeling a little better. I haven't had to do my inhaler, by the way, hardly at all. Um, I don't want to get used to having to use that if I don't have to. Um, but a lot of my uh, symptoms I was having are better. Um, my blood count was still low, but she said she'd check it again, and I think my next appointment's September, so I hope it's nothing bad waiting that long. But um, but anyway, that um, just, you know, the regular stuff. But I'm hoping I get some exercise. We get that boat fixed and get out on that lake. Get some exercise in the water because it's easier on your joints. That's why I say that. And uh, I'm hoping to do that. And anyway, I'm going to get off here. I've tried three times and I keep talking, don't I? Um, but thank you for joining me. I so much appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and a great week. And I'll be back on here as soon as I can. And remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter's the best medicine. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.